Michael Vandegrift, MCV Realty Group. Just to help our team grow and help our clients so much better, you know, in this. You know. Hello, everyone. Michael Vandegrift, MCV Realty, coming to you today with a video on understanding the as-is addendum in the state of Indiana. Okay, and this is as-is is a commonly misunderstood term in real estate. Um, you know, when you're writing up a purchase agreement, you've got three different options as far as inspections. You've got, you can waive the inspection, which is the strongest. But for a lot of buyers, you don't want to do that. Uh, I typically only waive it, it with my investors. You know, if we both looked at the house, we know there's nothing to worry about, you know, but like an example of we looked at an investment property down in Huntington and the water wasn't on. So we had to do an as is addendum just so that we could, and we had to have them turn on the water for a day, which you can do emergency turn on on utilities so that we could run the water and check the pipes. So we, we had to do one of the, and as is addendum because waiving is the strongest, um, as is the second strongest. And then you've got reserve the right to inspections. The reserve the right inspections lets the buyer request inspection repairs, but it kind of worries the seller because they could get nitpicked and it, and they could ask for things that aren't major, uh, defects, which is what you're really looking for when you're doing an inspection response, but that's for another video. So today we're gonna to cover this as is addendum, which I do a lot of these and, and the pros and cons to this. The major pro of the as is addendum is that the buyer has the right to get out if something's found in inspections. Um, so it pretty much goes through, this document supersedes anything else on the purchase agreement and it remains in full effect. This is what this first thing's saying is this, this addendum shall prevail. Okay. Um, now this could be amended later as well. I've done that, or you could rewrite the purchase agreement. Say we had one property where we found mold in the crawl space. And we, you know, when you're in a contract, you know, the buyer wants the house, the seller wants to sell the house. So you want to try to work it out. So what you can do is you can amend this purchase agreement to remove the as is, and then figure out how you're going to remediate the mold. Or you could just get out with this, which we'll get down to in the notice of termination later. So this is acknowledging, this second line is acknowledging that the home is being sold as is condition, you know, free from any major defects, which, you know, their their mechanical components, structures, foundation, roof, heating, plumbing, electrical, sewage, drainage, moisture conditions, air conditioning which I, I'm shocked air conditioning is on here in the state of Indiana because the air conditioning is not required. Heat is required in Indiana, like say Florida, each state's different on what they do and how they do real estate. Like in Florida, air conditioning is required, but heat's not. But in Indiana, heat is, air conditioning is not. But you can get out for air conditioning not working. Hot water heater, because you need hot water to take showers. Um, all the appliances are working. Um, no presence of pests, which we normally see termites in our area and other wood destroying pests, mold and other organisms. Um, and radon should be on here too. That's another big new thing. Then this third line goes over the condition of the property, zoning of the property, um, where it doesn't relieve the seller from the applicable legal applications to disclose any and all other known material defects. Because if it's disclosed already on the residential sales disclosure, then you can't come back and get out of the agreement on this. You you already signed that you knew that when you accepted the offer and you're bound to that. So that's why it's important on the seller side to disclose anything you don't want it to protect you so the buyer doesn't have an out. And then it just talks about how you reserve the right. And, you know, they, they talk about now they want it to be a, a licensed independent inspector, or qualified independent contractor, not like your dad or uncle you know, checking out, they want somebody, a third party. Um, that's the common language now we're seeing in inspection responses is third party qualified professional. Um, then you could ask for extra time. I usually normally market on this. The time for these inspections is about 10 days right now. We do have a quicker market. So you want to get these back and done. 10 days is about normal. The market does change over time. So it, 
when I first started, it was 14 days. Uh, 20 years ago, it was probably 20, 30 days, you know. So, and this is where the, you know, the importance of it comes in where if number five is the big hit, and this is the big con of as is addendums. Okay, an inspection response by buyer requesting credits or repairs is in violation of this as is addendum and shall allow seller to terminate the purchase agreement by serving a notice of termination to buyer and earnest money shall be promptly returned to buyer. So this, this is like a get out of jail free card for buyers. And this is why some listing agents don't like it because all you got to do is send an inspection response within that time period you put right here on the days beginning following the purchase agreement and the buyer gets their earnest money back and contract's done. You don't even got to wait on the mutual lease to be signed. You can just do a simple notice of termination. Done, boom, boom, go find your next house. Then it gets in further down here of defect defined under Indiana law and what defects you can get out of. And it, it's pretty much a condition that would have a significant adverse effect on the value of the property that would significantly impair the health or safety of future occupants of the property or that if not repaired, removed, or replaced would significantly shorten or adversely affect the expected normal life of the premises. And then it just goes through buyer acknowledging and agrees to this. And that's pretty much the as is addendum in a nutshell. Um, it does protect your buyer to get out and it tells the seller that, hey, you're not gonna ask for all kinds of dumb stuff because when they do an inspection on a home, no matter how nice you're, they're gonna find stuff. Always, that's their job is to find things. There's almost always, even on new homes, new build homes, brand new, inspected by the county, city, given certificate of occupancy, inspectors can still find things. So that's just something to keep in mind. And that's something I always advise on inspections. And we'll go in further in inspections and inspections responses. But I just want to cover this because there's so much misinformation on selling a house as is. Typically, it just means the seller doesn't want to do any repairs and the price is what they're going to pay. But a lot of times you want to make sure, especially if you've got a first time home buyer or something, you're buying a house that they're saying that the buyer needs us to protect themselves in case they find something that is a defect in the home and a state recognized defect or material defect. So that is the as is addendum in a nutshell. Feel free to reach out to us with any questions, concerns, comment if you have anything, and we'll try to cover it in another video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.